Hello and welcome to this CPOL tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create large scale Sentinel 1 mosaics. To get started, go to cpol.io and log into your CPOL account. On your start screen, you should see the Create Recipe menu. Here you have the possibility to generate radar mosaics based on the Copernicus Sentinel 1 mission. The first parameter you need to select is your area of interest. You are given three choices, country or province boundaries, an existing earth engine asset table, or manually draw a polygon on the map. We are going for country boundaries and select Equatorial Guinea. This will automatically zoom the background map to the respective region. By clicking on next, we submit the selection and are now able to select the date or date range. For now, we will select a single date in order to create a target day mosaic. This means that for the entire AOI, each overlapping image which is closest to the target day gets selected. For this example, we are going to select the 15th of February 2021. Just by giving these two parameters, our map will automatically load the composite in the standard RGB composite with the VV polarized band in red, the VH polarized band in green and the VV-VH ratio in blue. By looking at the composite, we can see that a huge part in the southwest of the country is missing. The reason for this might be the observation strategy of the Sentinel-1 mission. Unlike optical sensors, radar satellites cannot acquire all the time due to technical limitations. On the other hand, they can acquire data in the sun facing as well as in the sun averted side of the globe, namely the ascending and descending orbit, as they are independent of day or night time. While imagery over some countries are acquired by both ascending and descending orbits, others may just be covered by one out of the two. In the opt menu on the lower right, we have the possibility to filter the data for either one or both orbit directions. Let's choose the descending orbit. By submitting the changes using the apply button, the composite will automatically update using imagery only from descending orbits. We can see that the missing part in the southwest disappears and we cover all of the country now. Let's have a closer look by zooming into the mountainous region over mainland Equatorial Guinea. As soon as the first tiles are loaded, you will recognize the mountains that appear bright on the eastward facing slopes and darker on the westward facing slopes. While this helps you to better orientate on the image, it is an undesired artifact for subsequent land, app, land cover classifications or other sorts of land applications, as your radar signal is distorted by the terrain. CPOL allows us to correct for this. Let us duplicate our recipe to have the possibility to see the effect of this correction side by side. Therefore, we click on the menu button at the very top right and select Duplicate Recipe. A new tab opens with the exact same parameter settings we selected for our initial recipe. We can even link the displays of the two tabs by clicking on the symbol with the two circles at the top right of the screen. Now, let's open again our op menu, select the terrain under the geometric corrections and apply the changes. You can see that our image looks very much different as before. It is much harder to see the terrain as radiometric distortions along the slopes have been removed. Over some areas with very steep slopes, the correction is not possible and the radar signal gets unreliable. Those areas, affected by the so-called layer and shadow phenomena, are automatically masked out and will now be black. For land cover classification, the use of a target day mosaic is actually not advised, as environmental influences due to changes in moisture have a huge influence on the backscattered signal. If the application does not necessitate a specific date, it is rather recommended to create a multi-temporal composite that we call time scan. This type of mosaic does not only reduce speckle noise inherent to radar images, but also captures the temporal dynamics of each pixel. Therefore, we increase the information content to a more meaningful representation of the observed area. While this could be achieved by using the full time series, 
The timescan approach applies basic statistical measures such as the mean, min and max over time to each pixel, thus reducing the amount of data as compared to the full time series. The concept behind is more complicated as to actually apply it on CPOL. All we need to do is to select the date menu on the right. Instead of date, we can now either select a specific time period or full year, for which those multi-temporal statistics are created. We select 2020 as the year and apply the changes of our parameter setting. Since a higher amount of input images will make the multi-temporal statistics more robust, we're also getting back to the op menu and select both, ascending and descending orbits. In addition, we set the outlier removal to none and click apply. Outlier removal refers to the underlying time series. In some cases, Sentinel-1 scenes are affected by certain artifacts. Those can be interferences from military radar on the ground, sensor anom anomalies, or very heavy rainfall events. When looking at the pixel's time series, affected backscatter values appear as statistical outliers and can be removed for the calculation of the multi-temporal statistics. In our example, we can see lots of atmospheric distortions by heavy rainfall in the eastern part of the country. The artifacts are in bluish color and thus similar to water or bare soil areas, which would lead to errors in any subsequent classification task. Their form and intensity in color is irregular, making them look like clouds. Let's switch on the outlier removal once more and see the difference. You can see that you have two options, moderate or aggressive. Usually, moderate is preferable, but if you still see such artifacts, the aggressive option should help you to completely get rid of them. Now, after having updated the outlier removal parameter, those artifacts are gone within our timescan composite, confirming our suspicion of having areas affected by certain disturbing influences. Finally, you can export the mosaic as any other mosaic created on CPOL by clicking on the export symbol in the upper right part of the screen. A sensible selection of layers will include either the mean or median, together with the min and max, the standard deviation and the coefficient of variation abbreviated by CV for both bands. In addition, you can either export the image to your CPOL workspace or as an Earth Engine asset. You can also change the resolution. While most users are attracted by the highest possible resolution, namely 10 meters, you should consider that not only your storage needs, but also the speckle noise will reduce by lowering the resolution. 20 or 30 meters are usually a better trade-off than going for the 10 meter full resolution. You can now monitor your task in the task window. Once its status changes to Google Earth Engine is exporting, you can monitor its status directly in the Earth Engine code editor under the task section there. Hopefully, this video shed some light on how to create meaningful seamless radar mosaics from the Copernicus Sentinel-1 mission with just a few clicks on the Seaport platform that can then be used for subsequent analysis and classification tasks. Thanks for watching.